What's good, ladies and gentlemen? We have ourselves a very interesting start to the week. Mad love to everyone passing through to tonight's live. Last time we went live was on Thursday, okay? And we kind of had some flavor in the charts. It was a bit manic in the sense that non-farm payrolls gave us a bit of a surprise reading for the marketplace. But there's a lot happening. I can't take it seriously, man. That thumbnail is absolutely phenomenal. But we'll get to that very shortly. Word on the street says that dollar is looking to extend its gains. Risk aversion has started to be in the scenes of Wall Street right now. Dollar did come down and tap beyond that 100 zone to only come back up. Which kind of leaves us in a bit of a situation. Because if you go to the community posts on the YouTube channel Traders Reality, we had this discussion about Bitcoin and the dominance of the dollar. We know that when Bitcoin goes up, the dollar dominance is going down. Likewise, when the dollar is going up, Bitcoin is going down. But Bitcoin didn't do it. Now, Bitcoin hasn't really gone anywhere. And we're going to be talking about this in the live stream from a day trader's perspective to a holder's perspective. News on the street says that Binance is going to be withholding withdrawals and deposits. Now it is for US. But why are they doing that? That's the question. Is it because the biggest base is from the US? We'll look very shortly at how much cryptocurrency is being picked up. And I know you guys know about this website, Fiat Leaks, which gives us where all the cryptocurrency is being absorbed or purchased. Now, Binance is the bigger player. So naturally, when they put out information that they're withholding withdrawals and deposits, what's the story there? More importantly, we've got FOMC speakers throughout this week. We have Mr. Powell speaking tomorrow. But I did see an article saying that it's been moved to Wednesday. So we're going to know for sure tomorrow. He is due to speak 5 p.m. GMT, but... Let's see if that's going to hold, because on the calendar, it does show that he's speaking tomorrow at 5 p.m. Now, the word on the street does say that the hawkish stance is going to be lifted. That means that interest rates are going to keep on going up. So now it's going to lead us to the next question. Is this rally going to sustain itself? Because this data that's come out regarding the non-farm payrolls for half a million people in or seeking work? Unemployment rate drops. Now, from a political stance, Biden stood there and was like, look, man, planned as expected. The economy is going up, or should I say work is going up. People are out, you know, in and about getting ready to get that economy booming out because people are working. The problem with people working is that means they now have money to spend, which is only going to lead to what? inflation, which takes us to the idea of Mr. Burry saying that we might get an inflation spike. Now, let's just put this into perspective. I'm not here to give you FUD. I'm here to help you piece the puzzle together. Because if you're an investor, you're going to say to yourself, well, if interest rates look like they're going to keep on going up, we need to obviously wait for the impact of that. That's the thing. Seven consecutive increases on the interest rates by the Federal Reserve means what? that later on, things are going to cost more money. So companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, they've all declared cutting the workforce. We've just had an announcement that Dell's cutting 4 or 5% of its workforce, which is about 6,500 people. So the tech sector is always going to be responsible for the majority of the job layoffs. So where does that leave us? Leaves us in a bit of a sticky situation to the to the extent where is now the breaking point or is now the point in the charts where the bearish market continues lower to test the lows? Or will there be resilience across the board? Because there has been clear resilience by the market because all they've been holding on to is the idea that inflation is coming down. We've now had a number of scenarios coming into play which suggest that inflation could end up moving up. China reopening has done nothing but cause a little bit of a concern, let alone this idea of a bubble or balloon floating about in the US being shot down. What are we waiting for? Will there be a retaliation? So that's going to put pressure on the marketplace. Remember, 
The economy is not the market. Let's get to the charts, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. So in front of you, we have Mr. BTC. Now, Bitcoin, let's just let's just zoom it out a little bit. Let's go on to the four hour time frame. My day traders, I'm going to be acknowledging you very shortly. This is from a holder or the investor is now a time to pick up Bitcoin. So look at this. By the principle of the hybrid system, we understand that if there are vector candles, which is this green candlestick right here, it's an imbalance in the chart. So for anybody that might be looking at it, look closely. This is where an influx of orders has come into the chart, which has led price to move up. So lots of people are buying here, but we understand the model of the market. The business model says that naturally when you buy something of value, you want to sell it from the highest point possible. You don't buy something of value to sell it at the lowest point, which is where traders get trapped continuously. Buy at the highest point because they feel like they're missing out. Sell at the lowest point because they feel like they're going to miss out on a move to the downside. In this instance, different story. But you can see the big vector candles pushing price down to trap traders into the idea that price is going lower. Now we jump over to the current price point of Bitcoin and you can see that it's starting to topple out inside this zone, okay? We go over to the daily time frame. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We need Bitcoin to give us proof that it can go higher because if it's going to give us proof of it going higher, it means that market maker is going to want to bring price down lower, finalize liquidity here. And when I say finalize it, I mean... He wants to go and hit the liquidation points because when you buy, you put up a margin because you're using leverage, okay? We refer to this chart over here and we can see bright as day on the 12-hour chart. This shows us the liquidation points for Bitcoin's current leverage positions. Well, that's on Binance right now. And in the last 12 hours, we're at a balanced zone right now. Look, here is where we have got short liquidations. So at 23,175, we got five, well, $596 million worth of short liquidations. Slightly above that, well, we'll go over to the bigger gap, but you can see at 23,250, we have $552 million worth of long, short liquidations. Going down below, we've got $567 million worth of longs at 22,650. So those are the long liquidations. This gives us a foot map of how likely Mr. Market Maker is going to attack each of these zones. There will always be liquidity to the upside, to the downside. When you change the actual time frame of the chart, you get a better overview of what could happen. Okay? Now, look. There's nothing going on. We go even closer to here. Look, there's nothing happening in here. The, the darker the color, okay, the less liquidation. So at 23,000, there's zero liquidations. That's what this chart implies. Bang on the nose, 23, zero liquidations. At 22,550, we have got ourselves $4.2 billion worth of longs. So let's put two and two together. With the idea of Binance withholding or suspending US withdrawals and deposits for international customers, what's it going to do? You don't think people that are going to be looking at news like that and turning around saying, yeah, man, that's all good, bro. I'm cool with that. No. People are naturally going to react. Because whether you've got $5,000 in there or $100,000, $200,000, the sheer thought of not being able to access it is going to make you do something, which is why they've chosen the words carefully. And they've stated that Binance's net US dollar outflow was over 172 million for the day based on the data from DeFi Llama. So once they declared it, that is what had happened. All right. Now, it's a small amount considering that it has 42 billion dollars worth of crypto assets, according to Arkham. All right. So we are net positive on our net deposits. So it's trying to just take away the idea of concern for investors. But quite frankly, chat and anyone watching this video in the comments section, if you knew, given with the reputation of cryptocurrency, would you be comfortable leaving your crypto right now in an exchange? 
that doesn't mean that what's happened to FTX is going to happen to Binance. But logically, we're not here to spread FUD. I'm not here to pull the wool over your eyes. Logically speaking, that's like you taking a treasure chest and dumping it in a place where you don't think people will turn up. And then all of a sudden, a busload of people pulls right next to your treasure chest. And you're thinking, and ah, no one's going to touch it because I've got a lock on my treasure chest. Nah, man, it doesn't work like that. Naturally, you're going to react. And this is what could lead price to go lower in Bitcoin. Because it could also imply that price goes up because if people are withdrawing their capital from exchanges, there's only one place for them to put it, and that's a wallet. Now think about that. So it could be good news, it could be bad news. The sheer locking of withdrawals is suggesting something. Whether it's good or bad, you automatically think it's bad anyways. What have I just done there? Anyways, back to the chart itself. Just so we can address some interesting news, I didn't know that the Boganoff brothers were at the Grammys. Like I, I didn't know that they turned up and it actually turned out to be Madonna. All right, I had no idea. And yet my guys, the Boganoff bros, it's it just took me by surprise. Moving on, going on the idea that Dell is cutting its workforce, again, is going to have an impact on the marketplace. But something that caught my attention was this discussion regarding Silvergate and BlackRock. What's the story with Silvergate and BlackRock? Well, we know Silvergate, according to this, provides financial infrastructure solutions and services for the digital currency industry. And where was their largest stake? Or should I say, where did they contribute the most liquidity? FTX. That's why this bad boy is down nearly 92%. So why has BlackRock increased its stake in Silvergate? Well, if you just look over here, guys, to the top of the chart here, you can see current earnings estimates for 2023 suggests that Silvergate is minus 89%. All right. But going into 2024, it's projected to be about 249% on the earnings per share. This is a company that was closely tied to FTX. And FTX hasn't got the best reputation. So would one assume that BlackRock is now getting in on the cheap? Yeah? If we look at the weekly time frame itself, you can see bright as day that there's been some big movement and their earnings per share that was just recently declared was minus 27%. So guys holding this stock have lost a lot of money. But when we look at this over here, if you can see, it, I don't think you can see it, but it says that there's a number of funds that hold this stock. And from September through to December, we've had a reduction of funds holding the stock. So it went from 471 to 423, okay? Now, the next reading is going to suggest that if it does show an increase, that there's something brewing in the crypto space. Remember, these guys are like the bank for cryptocurrency, all right? Why is BlackRock putting its foot in that company, given such terrible reputation regarding what's going on with FTX. Like FTX is still going to be a stigma for cryptocurrency. It's not going to go, but it's still going to be that crypto stigma for the better word. Okay. This is what's got my attention, guys. Dollar rebound set to extend amid Fed speakers and China tensions. So what does that mean? Quite frankly, guys, when the dollar is moving up, we know that Bitcoin is going to have a hard time moving up at the same time. Only last week, dominance of the dollar was scheduled flat. It wasn't doing much, took a little move to the downside, then instantly came back up into the zone. Bitcoin at the same token, since it's made this big move to the upside, has not succeeded at taking out the key 25 to 20 zone. Why is that zone important? Check this out. If we go over to Bitcoin on the higher time frames, unless Bitcoin takes out the 25251 region, don't even be considering going long or even picking up cryptocurrency. That's not financial advice. That's just common sense because you haven't seen a clean break of what would appear to be the last point of Bitcoin selling off. Just look at the chart. You can see over here, 
This area here is important. Why? Because that's when Bitcoin sold off and made the move to the downside and tapped that good old 15 and a half zone. Found support and moved back up again. Hasn't really taken that much interest higher. Narrowly misses the zone, but can't make it above this region up here, which sits at the 25263 zone. Now, this is what I'm looking for with crypto, or should I say Bitcoin? Referring to the daily time frame, you're probably going to see a lot of guys talking about crosses, death cross, golden cross. So which one are you guys going to go with? I want to know. Put it in the comments section. In front of you, you have got the 50 EMA, which is this purple area right here. For anybody new to the channel and you don't know what I'm talking about in relation to this purple area, it's in reference to the hybrid system. It's a cloud around the 50 EMA. So just focus on the blue line right here. And if you are new, be sure to like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on. <laughs> so in front of you, 200 EMA right there is the white line. 50 EMA right here. Most of you are thinking that a golden cross is about to occur. Do we go long? That's the truth. Do we go long on this golden cross? But the problem that I've got is on the weekly time frame, we have got a death cross. So which is it? What are you personally going to make your decisions off? A weekly chart or a daily chart? Now that doesn't mean that Bitcoin is now going to go lower indefinitely. Ideally, to prove the health of the move to the upside, we want to see Bitcoin come down. Why? Because it will give us the impression that they're loading up their positions. Because by principle of DCA or the true DCA in principle, it means that you're loading up your bag as it's dropping with the idea of it to continue back up. So now you've got yourself a better average in price as it moves to the upside. The problem with DCA is when it's going down and down and down, you're forever having to deal with the loss and you are sort of reluctant to add when it comes to DCA as it keeps on going lower because you'd like to see a little bit of a return. But looking at Bitcoin on the daily time frame, in my opinion, I would want to see a test of the 200 EMA to solidify this move to the upside. Because what happens? You buy something when it's cheap. You don't buy it when it's expensive. That's the logic. That's what economics is. That's what you are taught. Okay, you don't go and buy something expensive to sell it at a loss. All right. Now, of course, there's other things that can come in between that. You invest in a property and it gets damaged and you want to sell it just to release the liquidity. Naturally, you're going to take a hit. But the common practice is if I buy this pen right here, I'm going to buy it at X amount and I want to sell it for a higher price. Why is the market any different? And this is what I'm trying to convey to you all. You want to see Bitcoin come down, but let's assume it doesn't and it holds out inside of this zone. We need to understand what reason does Bitcoin have to stay higher? Well, firstly, you need to go over to the dominance of the dollar and understand the flow of liquidity. So, Dixie right now has done a great job of coming up towards its 50 EMA on the daily time frame. Cause for concern suggests that the red vector candle on the dominance of the dollar is likely to be taken if and only if investors are still seeking the safety. They are suggesting the speakers for this week, Powell, we've got Waller, We've also got Waller again. And then where is it? My guy. Where's my guy? Powell and Waller. No, Williams. Williams will be speaking. I thought I saw Williams. Where's Williams on there? It's not there. Anyways, they're going to maintain their stance that the Fed is still going to be increasing interest rates. So investors of Bitcoin or Invail holders, you've got to keep that in the back of your mind. Why do you think so many layoffs are happening across the board? Simple. They need to absorb the fact that business is going to cost more money in the future. Dell has only cut its workforce by six and a half thousand because it believes that they're going to see a slowdown in, uh, in the economy. There we go. It uh, cuts 5% of its global workforce as the company prepares for an expected economic downturn. 
Yet Goldman Sachs decides to put out a projection saying that the likelihood of a recession has dropped from 35% to 25% chance of it actually happening. Well, the last time Goldman Sachs or even Morgan Stanley suggested anything, they said that when dollar dominance was at 104, they said that you should turn defensive and pick up dollars. Now we are at 101 and we've bounced away from that zone. So the time from the 5th of January, all the way through now to the 3rd of February. And it was even beforehand. It was in December they actually made that announcement prior to the Santa rally, which supposedly happened, but it was in January it kind of happened. But you're never going to know when to roll with the narrative because you have to refer to the charts. So keep an eye out on the dominance of the dollar. Go over to euro and have a look at what's going on there. Now, this is what you've got to consider with euro. The euro itself makes up 56% of the transactions of the dominance of the dollar because the dollar dominance is made up of a basket of assets. You've got euro, you've got pound, you've got yen, the Swiss franc, the krone, okay? And it's made up of the transactions of those asset classes. So when they are selling those asset classes, it means that they're getting rid of them to go back into dollar. That's why you see dollar going up and euro coming down. If I get rid of all of this stuff right here, let me hide it. Now, euro has started to drop and it's continuing its drop to the downside, suggesting that the impact, or should I say, China tensions and Fed speakers, like if Powell speaks tomorrow and gives any indication that he is going to be even more hawkish, because in the last FOMC meeting, he was not hawkish. All right. He gave the market the excuse to believe that, yeah, it's all about inflation. We just want to get inflation down. But the market didn't really react in that direction because, it, frankly, Bitcoin stayed where it was, all right? Can't take key zones. Now, we want to see a retrace for Bitcoin. We want to see a retrace in euro, but if they keep on dropping... It just tells us that investors are going for the safety of the dollar. Look left and you've got that vector candle zone. What do I mean about these vector candles? And now listen, if you are new to the channel, mad love and respect. We are close towards that 100K. So hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. But I'm grateful that you give me your time to sit and listen to me, chew your ears off and give you Madonna thumbnails with the Boganoff brothers, whatever they're called. Anyways. How can you, if you are new to this system, understand how likely price is going to go from one point to the next? Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, you can't. That's the truth. There's no guarantee. But you improve the odds of it actually working in your favor by paying attention to what they could be going to. Okay? So let me show you something. This is something that I shared with the patrons over the weekend. Now, Saturday night, we had this conversation about Bitcoin's short-term movement in the chart. And it was breaking down the logic of understanding how to utilize the hybrid system. It was a breakdown all right there. So here we go. We broke down the idea that Bitcoin was likely to come down, but we also considered how likely or what would we need to see for Bitcoin to move up. Now, what I like to do when I'm trying to establish a direction in the charts, I need to see what they're not doing more of to make me believe that they're likely to follow on in the opposite direction. So if they're doing more selling and they're not actually breaking higher, I'm only inclined to believe it's going to go lower. If they're moving price lower but not breaking down lower, I'm only inclined to believe it's going to go up. It's all probabilities. There is no indefinite way. And if you get in your minds that there is an indefinite way of trading, you're being lied to. There is no indefinite way because you can have someone that holds that, uh, a system that makes them 100% return and another person with the same system, one wins 100% of the time, the other loses 100% of the time, but they've both got the same system. At the end of the day, it's all mindset. So back to the chart. This is what we explained. We explained that if price breaks the 50 EMA on the four hour, you want to see a strong vector breaking. Make sure the close is below the 50 EMA cloud, which is this purple stuff right here. Now we go back to Bitcoin in the chart and we kind of see what happened from that point. So here it is. That was on the four hour. We were looking at the hourly. 
No, yeah, it was on the four hour time frame. And this is what had happened. On the four hour time frame, because in the notes, we actually discuss the vector candle zone right here, because this was the only next logical point for price to go back to. Okay. So when you go into the chart, you can see that that area right there where the candlesticks were, was doing more of moving away from the highs as opposed to going close towards it. Just look at the candlesticks. They weren't showing a conviction to close higher. These wicks that you see right here is market makers attempt to grab liquidity and move away. Go back into the high block. These areas where you don't see the liquidity, if we just run the chart again, check this out. This is on the seven day chart where Bitcoin had gone, it's on the 12 hours. Let me go to the 12 hour chart right here. Here we go. So that moved down, consecutive eating of the liquidity there, 250 million, 75 million. Then we're going down here, 272 million. So they're breaking down, eating the liquidity. That's what this zone was right here. Then we had an influx drop and the 50 EMA close. Strong vector candle below the 50 EMA cloud was the trigger for the short position. Why? Because you had gone into the previous vector candle and there was still liquidity for them to grab inside of this zone. Why? Because if you notice inside of this area here, this candlestick had moved down into that zone aggressively and then instantly moved back up, suggesting that there were traders trapped in that zone. So what better job by Mr. Market Maker to send price back into that zone to make them believe exactly the same thing, that price is going to go lower from that point for them to only reverse it back up again to only come back down even lower. That's what you get when you go into the Patreon of the Traders Reality channel. That's what we do. I try and get people to understand how likely price is going to go from one point to the next utilizing these candlesticks. You want to learn more, just get into the Patreon, get into the Discord. The community there will serve you very well. Now, the question on all of your hat, uh, uh, or should I say on your minds, is the following. Where's Bitcoin going to go next. Dollar dominance is all you need to be paying attention to. Now, as long as there's more tensions with regards to China, you need to pay close attention to the yen. As long as the yen keeps on going down and they keep forcing it down, dollar is going to shoot up. Let's just go over to oil. What happened with oil? Now, oil took a nosedive over the previous past few days. We want to see it come back up into this vector candle region at the 75 zone. But we do have a green vector wick right here, which can be a bit of a problem for us. If you can't go short on oil, you can go long USD CAD because it's the opposite. Canada is a big producer of oil. So when oil goes down, it impacts the Canadian dollar, which leads the US dollar against the Canadian dollar to go up. All right. At the same time, we want to draw your attention to USDT. Now, guys will know about this because we did speak about it. The USDT chart, it just tells you when people are picking up crypto and when they're selling it. We seem to have this behavior right here. The only next logical point in the chart for USDT with the idea that people are going to be scared of this Binance withholding of withdrawal or suspending them, we would assume that USDT chart would end price in and around the 6.84 zone. Now, if Powell speaks tomorrow and suggests anything and says to us, yep, yeah, we're going to we're going to make sure that we increase interest rates and it's going to be harder for you guys. You're going to witness the markets take an absolute nosedive. All right. Thank you, Aronomus. Mad love, man. Mad love to you. Without the cool accent. <laughs> cool. So with that being said, what have I given you in principle? I've made you understand, well, brought to your attention that this Binance withdrawal or suspension, deposits and withdrawals, it's going to create concern, all right? To retail, refer to the charts, okay? Day traders, it doesn't matter what price it is. 
you're looking for price to go up and to go down. What are you going to exploit? You're going to take advantage of the moving average. You're going to take advantage of vector candles, stopping volume, whatever it is you decide to do. But for the holder or the investor of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, we still have to go to the bigger picture here. Call it FUD. If you think I'm a perma bear, I can't help but suggest to you that the macros are there for a reason. Now, frankly, I don't refer to macros when I take a trade because I'm not in the trade long enough. Could be five minutes, 10 minutes. Today in the Patreon, took some shorts on NASDAQ, building some shorts, took advantage of a vector candle recovery, which happened in three minutes. Now, do the macros impact me at that point in time? No. But if you're an investor of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, you're naturally going to think, okay, economically speaking, the jobs market is booming. That could suggest people are going to be spending money in the near future. That can only assume that prices are going to go up. That can only assume inflation is going to move up again. So you're preparing yourself for the time you believe is right to get in. If Powell tomorrow suggests to us that there's no terminal rate, which he kind of has said it, he's only decreased the, the rate hike down to 25 basis points. But you've got the ECB and the UK itself looking at increasing their interest rates aggressively. And now usually when the UK and the Eurozone increase their interest rates aggressively, the same thing's going to follow with the US. Why did the subprime mortgage crisis in 2007 and 8 impact the UK and the Euro? Because they're all invested into it. They buy and they sell each other's debt. There's no reason for you to think, right, I am just going to dismiss what anyone says. Bitcoin is going up. Granted, Bitcoin will move up. We're looking for the when. So it's going to be an interesting week. Just prepare yourselves for Powell's conversation and any comments made by any FOMC members this week. It's quiet week across the board. So just be mindful of that. Keep an eye on the dominance of the dollar and pay close attention to how the market reacts to Powell's key words. Then you'll understand where you are in the charts. Ladies and gentlemen, my guy, do I see us recovering red vector around 23,350? Let's go back into the charts. 23,350. Red vector on 23,350. That would be up here. The only way that you would think Bitcoin's going to come up and recover that point in the chart is simple. Look at what it does on the smaller time frames. What is it showing you? If they made an attempt towards that zone, it would have come from this pump earlier on. This pump right here is a problem. I don't like it because it hasn't followed through with it. If price from this point in the chart continued, so from the rise up to the retrace and follow through and break the psychological ranges, then yeah, I'd be of the impression that yeah, they could go up towards that 23,350 zone but it didn't happen. That's where the problem is. Frankly, the biggest clue for me, that's an awesome book, Andrew. The biggest clue for me is what they've done around the psychological areas. Now, this area in the chart is very significant because it's the first high and the first low that is set at the start of the new market in crypto. Okay? Now, crypto operates all the time but it's when the exchange is open and they start getting those orders in. It's the first high and low for Bitcoin at the start of a new trading week. Now, usually the principle says that if they can't get above the psychological low, then it would suggest that they're going to be trading away from it, which would imply that they have been building shorts inside of this zone, getting ready to release them, and build longs at the same time whilst they're releasing that liquidity. Because for every time you see price go down, they're attacking someone else's long liquidation. They're using that liquidity to pay themselves on the shorts that they have been building. Okay? So once that money is triggered, so when you when you go short, or let's, let's bring it like this. When you go long, you put up margin. Okay? 
The position that you open is a buy. When your margin or your liquidation is triggered, you sell. Now, behind that sell, there has to be another order to buy. That's the purpose of the market maker. His goal is to make sure that he aligns all of the capital, all the liquidity that comes into the marketplace. Now, they do this via algorithms and high-frequency computers and what have you to make it so that it's, it's a seamless marketplace. So your order gets filled. You can now open Binance and take a trade and you're instantly filled because there's liquidity in the chart waiting for it to be matched with your order. All right. So when the market maker hits your liquidation, your margin that is triggered as a sell order to get rid of your position is instantly absorbed by a purchase by Mr. Market Maker. So just be mindful when you're using leverage. The margin that you put up has automatically been matched with the market maker and he's coming for that liquidity. So be mindful with your liquidation points. Your liquidation point is not your stop loss. All right, make sure that it's not your stop loss. A little practice that I try and encourage the patrons of the channel to do is where you know your liquidation point is. Set your stop loss at least 25, 30% of the way towards your liquidation. All right, don't make your liquidation your stop loss. Because you've gone into the trade with the idea that you're happy to lose it. Don't get it twisted. We know that investing and trading, you do lose money, all right? But improve the odds of you retaining as much money as you can so that you've got more money to go in or a decent amount of capital to open another trade to effectively make the return on the loss back. That's the idea, okay? Chat, can we look at Wi-Fi monster move? Oh, look at Wi-Fi. What are you going to say to me? My Wi-Fi is bad. Nah, man. All right, Wi-Fi, Yiffy, Yiffy IA. Okay, this bad boy. Seven and a half thousand dollars for this asset. Twelve-hour chart is what I want to look at. I've been marking off these zones already anyway, and they've come back towards those vector zones. Cool. I think it was you that actually did it. The cross has already happened, but then you've got the daily right here, which is two. I mean, look, this is the only way. OK, let me just bring this up. The only what a guy. The only way that this is going to sustain a move to the upside. Is if the 50 can cross over the 200. Because what you've got to remember is this. If price stays stagnant like that. The 50 and the 200 are going to come together to the point where you ain't going to have any idea of what it's going to do, which means that you're then going to get this structure and price is going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. And it will practically be a gamble as to whether it's going to go up or down. Likewise, what you want to look for is the following. You want to see price break above the 200 EMA. Whilst it's breaking above that point and consolidating back into it, the 50 EMA in principle. Now, moving averages are laggard, all right? But the 50 EMA will get closer and closer to price. And as long as the moving average is pointing, if you take a clock, and if the momentum of the clock, if the moving average is pointing 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you've got upside momentum. If it's pointing to 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, you've got downside momentum. So just off face value on the daily time frame, you would be in agreement and say to me, yeah, that is moving higher. But we've got a problem of resistance right here, which can affect the chance of this moving average or this move to the upside to continue. But you've always got to rely on what Bitcoin does. And that's the truth. You go into the actual totals chart and you just look at what the liquidity is showing. Now, for the market cap of crypto getting over $1.016 trillion, round of applause. We've gone into the trillion dollar mark. Happy days. I ain't seeing the candlesticks yet. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing money coming in. Are they just going to hold price until Powell speaks? Because we actually don't have much coming out. I said it to you guys earlier on. The only thing that's due out is the unemployment claims. And listen, if the unemployment claims come out again, all right, and it shows that P 
people are claiming, there's less people claiming benefit. <sighs> what more is there to say? Okay. The key data is down here on the Friday. It's the only one bit of information that you really want to pay attention to. That's the consumer sentiment. If this consumer sentiment comes in and it's positive and it, it shows that people are really chuffed about things and like everything's great. You've got a war. You've got a crisis with energy. There's madness happening in, in China. OK, with balloons and bubbles, you've got the Boganoff twins, you know, resurrected back to life again at the Grammys. Happy days. Jokes aside, it's a chaotic world that we're living in. And the markets are going to reflect that sooner before the economy reflects it. Remember, the market is not the econ the economy. Sorry. Mad love and respect, guys. If you are new, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll be checking in with you all tomorrow, 10 p.m. GMT. Take care of yourselves, gang. Peace.